Hello, welcome. Today we are going to talk about a war of attrition, attrition of the wars. And we are going to be using an example. I am going to transfer all I learned from this example. In this situation, the United States declared war on us. On us, we are defending as Mexico. And why? Because they feel confident, because they have a smaller army in theory, in paper. They have a, about 400,000 units. And we have more units, but our units has just fought many wars and we are half capacity. So in practice, we have 310,000 men and they have almost 400,000. The problem that they have is that most of their army or at least half of the United States Army is militia. So this is going to cripple the United States economy. But if they feel threatened to lose the war, they are going to mobilize all and this war may take a long time and end into a war of attrition. So in this video, we are going to see all you can do to avoid that. So when you start the diplomatic phase, I strongly recommend you pick an, an objective very close to the Mexi Mexican border and then wait for the enemy to move. You have basically two options here. Since the enemy has spent all their diplomatic points in picking objectives, you can pick several allies and have an easy win and get only one province. If you think that you can win this war easily and we are going to do that, just wait until the enemy moves and on last minute we are going to pick several objectives. In the meanwhile, go to your armies and go to the second tab and make sure to enable the improvement options but also in the last one is very important because the hospital and the fields hospital is going to speed up your recovery rate a lot and that is exactly what you need do this on all your armies but after that make sure to check the cost i for example if you lack opium or you don't have a trade route to import you mouse over here and you are going to be seeing how much you are spending on the different products and if one product is too expensive and you can't import, can sell it. Also, if you mouse over the total man and manpower of the army, you're going to see that the total of all our armies is just increasing in YK per week. So it's too late, it's too little because you're going to be making just 4K a month and in total 48k a year and we want the army now we need the army now so you don't have time for replenishment but there is a solution for that just keep recruiting units on your other provinces where you have peasants and for example you can fill about 4k units with my production capacity i have a production capacity of 800 and training units you are going to be able to fill about 4k 5k units a week that is four five times the amount you get by just resupplying for that i conquer many provinces in africa also in indochina you can get easy province by helping your allies for example the province in indochina was just by helping the french in a war against china and germany and they gave me cambodia as a payment but also in africa you can take ethiopia that has a lot of people there that will work for you also in congo i have a strong territory here full of people and despite they take 20 years into incorporate they can you can fill 1000 100 men easily on those territories and we are going to do just that right now as you can see in three weeks we can have one unit but we have several queues working at the same time so now the enemy has started mobilizing and the trick here is we are going to mobilize only one army this one is our actually best army. We have 230 men. We are going to mobilize. It's very close to the border. And just then send them to the border. We got a defensive strategy in this one. So we are going to put them on the special ability. And all the generals on defense. Super important that you put them all in defense. Right click. Defense. And defense we are going to mobilize only this one 
and get the the ones under repair and the units building here but we are not going to mobilize them yet now since the enemy did not call any ally we did our claims we claim half of the united states so now the war has started they brought austria so we have no other choice than to bring england to compensate i did not want that because the war is going to be longer but england is a good ally and compensates austria and as I said, as I mentioned previously, I didn't mobilize all my army. Why? Because I want to lure them to attack. I only have a 12% advantage. If I mobilize all my army, it will be a big mistake because I will start suffering attrition and the enemy is going to keep sending more units, more units. And in the long run, this is going to be a very long war and they are not going to be attacking and we are going to be gaining very little advantage so we want exactly this that the enemy attacks us and we have advantage in all the battles let's take a look we are defending this is the attacking side and we are on the defending side as you can see we are going to be destroying these units here they are having heavy losses and a kind of tougher battles but the idea is to destroy the US manpower for a while now the Austrian army has arrived, so we want to improve this number, minus 11, and we are going to send to the front at least one of these armies to reinforce the front line. So we right click on a general, split formation, and then mobilize and send him to the front line. He has about 29 battalions, and you want to have a small advantage, like 20 points, we are in 11 right now and keep on defensive with just a little advantage the enemy is going to be lured to attack and they are doing so 12 versus 12 but we are defending so in all these battles we are going to be killing enemies unfortunately the english go on the offensive and they just make you lose points but that's the problem of having allies at least they are not your men so it's not going to be a problem in the long run now it's 21 again, keep it on that number, 20, and keep defending. And now they have switched on defense, so we are going to... You have two options here, to retreat some of your units and lure them to attack you again, or mobilize all your army, we are doing just that. Put them on defense along the front, and the English are going to be pressing, but since you are going to be making more enemy units occupied with you, the enemy units confronting the English will be smaller and you will keep receiving units you just remove them and they will go to the front line you click confirm and all those are newly training units at 100 percent that will go to the front line and when you feel that you have spent many units of the enemy defended like here that your number is like 42 percent you switch to an attack you can always lure the enemy by retreating units to the back of your territory and then it will keep attacking and then you bring all your units from your rear into the front line and start pushing now austria is out of the game so the advantage is on our side but actually i did not want allies nor austria in the middle because it just delayed the process but now we have a 71 percent we are going to try to put all our armies in offensive but England is using some of the space as you can see they are a problem because they send so very small number of units against huge enemy numbers so they make no sense the attacks and we are wasting a frontline space and I keep getting new reinforcements so I keep adding them to the frontline all new units full strength but sadly the English are using all the front line the reason why I want Mexican army is because we have much bigger units so we deal more damage and we exterminate the enemy faster as you can see this number this number decreases faster so by having Mexican units in the front line we are going to deplete the enemy manpower faster again as you can see how we kill faster the enemy units eight seven five 
it's like a single key machine gun. Take a look. The kill rate is huge. Much better than the English. And if you wonder how to concentrate units into bigger units, I merge my army. I'm using a single huge army in the front line with just four generals field marshal level, so they control huge units that deal, of course, more damage. 66, 65 versus 31. And you want these numbers to drop faster than this number on this side. And once the Mexican units manage to get in the front lines, they are doing, going to do the killing as this number is going to reach 90. It's 85 and things are going to steamroll. As you can see, I have my armies ready, but the British are blocking my advance. They are using the front line and that's the reason why I don't like allies on the front line. Unfortunately, the English are out of the game, so now we can advance freely. The numbers are 80 on our side, 79, and let's take a look at the combat. Now we are 32 versus 15. And now, as you can see, the numbers are much better. We are using double units than the enemy. The, unit, the English, we are using same or less because they, we are using small units, generals with low rank. And that's why I prefer a general with high rank because we can concentrate more fire, firepower. And now, as you can see, we are using the full front line, but with bigger units that vaporize the enemy faster. And when the British went home, we were about 69, 70, and now we start growing, 78, and we move faster. 78. A battle one, 61, you want to win the battle as fast as possible. 70-45 and the key is to have bigger numbers and it's growing fast 86 84 86 and this is because the English are not cluttering the front line anymore 89 close to 90 percent and now we are 90 91 92 and this is the number that we, you want to have all the war. Keep it at 90, and you are going to be. You can do it faster. The territory is huge, but if you keep this number close to 90, you are going to have not so many losses. 87. And we have the same four battles at a time, but with much better numbers. Battle 1, this number is going down very fast. This is the kill rate. And we are now with 92, 93, close to a steam roll, 94. And keep moving. And once you put them on the negative, it's just a matter of time. They are minus 26. Each week will go down faster. And with 91 advantage. So the war was long, but it, was, it wasn't a war of attrition. After all the claims we asked from the United States, the, our infamy was at 90, but thanks to the, the war that was quite a bit long, it went down a few points from 90 to 70, so we lost 20 infamy, but we gained a huge territory and our economy is super fine. We can see here, now we are number 4, standard of living very low. 
population and that's all so hope you understand the mechanic the mechanics is to use big units when you can try to avoid allies so you use your front line with your best units and put on defensive and lure the enemy to attack you retreat units so the enemy attacks and then hit back with all the force start keep gathering units in the rear try to no not to mobilize them until you need them when the enemy is weakened unfortunately i had to mobilize because the english were pushing and i needed to help them but ideally you you wouldn't mobilize your units until the moment is right <laughs> 